Hi, and guys. I are answering your top 10 grocery questions. Guys, this video is brought to you by our Dining and a Dime cookbooks on sale now for Valentine's Day or Volume 1, Volume 2, and our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbooks. 35% off right now for Valentine's Day. Go grab them at livingonadime.com. So we are answering your top 10 grocery questions today. You sent me four or five. And I did not. <laughs> <laughs> you do know liars burn in the pit of hell, right? I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I got you on that one. <laughs> oh, your oh. sins are forgiven and remembered yes. no more. Okay. <laughs> Number one, how long is food good after it's expired? Forever almost. Uh, okay. It depends on the food, but we are totally shocked by the number of people who refuse to eat any food that's expired at all. Now, if it's raw meat in the refrigerator that has not been frozen after the sell by date that's the date the store can no longer sell it you have three to four days give or take to to eat that meat that is the only food that you really have to eat mm -hmm. right away after the sell by date canned goods You've got eight to 10, 15 years. Yeah. Anything in a can. It'll, they'll last. It'll last forever, just about. So, flour, any flour based yeah. products except for hard tack, which is old fashioned crackers that they used for long term storage, but flour, crackers, those type of things, about 18 months past the best buy date. Um, sugar, indefinitely. It doesn't matter if it gets. Mm -hmm hard, clumpy, nothing. Well, it's just fine. Just shave it. Just break it up. However you want to do that. Just drop it in your tea. Um, rice is good for 15 to 20 years. Beans are good for 15 to 20 years. They will be harder to cook. So you'll have to soak them longer, boil them longer. Um, for stuff that's been frozen in the freezer usually lasts a year to 18 months, give or take. Um, uh, we had a viewer that um, a viewer that ate a turkey that was five years old last Thanksgiving. It was perfectly fine. So now, what happens is everybody's afraid and worried about this, and you sh just forget, get yeah. over the fear and the worry. The thing is, you're not going to get poisoned. Even the stuff in the freezer, bacteria doesn't grow in the freezer, okay. so you can't get sick from it. It'll just what this stuff does is just loses its flavor. Yeah. It dries out in the freezer yeah. after years, you know, being in there. You can still eat it. As a matter of fact, I even read places where they said you could take and after it's got freezer burn stuff, I don't normally mm -hmm. do it, but you can in a pinch, cut it up and put it in a casserole. It just loses the flavor. Yeah. It's all that these things do. The canned goods, the freezer stuff, they're not going to give you food poisoning. Mm -hmm. Nope. So stop worrying yep. about that. But. Hello, Kristen from Six Sisters. <laughs> I was just editing the video yesterday from the conference. You know what? So. I read Six <laughs> Sisters ages ago. <laughs> Tar didn't know anything about that. I did too. No, I told you. And I told you about Six Sisters. This was a long, long time oh. ago. And then she started I seeing see. them. Yeah. yeah. All right. If number two, if a store puts food on clearance, is it spoiled or slash I refuse to eat spoiled food from the grocery store because it's marked down? <clears throat> I don't know how many times I'm at the grocery store in the clearance aisle where they have the clearance stickers on meat or frozen foods or whatever. And people will comment and say, well, I'm not going to buy spoiled food. Guys, the grocery store cannot sell spoiled food. <laughs> they can't that doesn't mean that they don't but legally they're not supposed to it only means that the store has to sell it that day so they're willing to mark it down to get it off the shelves and moved so that they're not sitting on inventory that they have to throw away later mm -hmm. that's all it means and like for the bakery they just rotate their stuff out because people just you know but it's still good i mean they probably the night before They'll put the that stuff that's left on the shelf for in the morning. So you're just like 12 hours from it being, you know, really fresh or whatever. You can take it home, put it in the freezer if you want, if you have room for that or eat it, yeah. you know. So, no, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with clearance food. Once again, canned goods last forever. So if they have canned goods on clearance, yeah, 
you know, it's not going to hurt. Yeah. And if you guys have your grocery questions, please post them. Mike will get, grab them and email them to me and we'll answer them as soon as we're done with our list of top 10. Number three, I can't find the grocery prices you quote. Okay. This one kind of <laughs> irritates me a lot. All right. I Last week, I asked our viewers to send in their ads and their grocery prices because I am not exaggerating. We get this literally every single day, mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. day. First of all, in what is it called? The continuous, the contiguous, how do you say it? And what? The United States. The contiguous 48 states, states. <laughs> the United of States. the United States. <laughs> I guarantee you, you will be able to find these prices if you want to look for them. Yes, in California. Yes, in New York. Yes, in no man's land, Wyoming. You will be able to find these prices. It's just whether or not you want to find these prices. All right. Now, for those of you who say you can't find them, first of all, check your grocery ads. Secondly, you not only the grocery ads are the, ads are the one store you always go to, but several stores. Yeah. You know. Number two, you're not going to be able to be persnickety about going to the store. Oh. You're going to have to find, if you like one particular store and another store has stuff on sale, it's probably worth the trip to go over there. Mm -hmm. um, next, if you live... Like when we lived in Idaho, it was 70 miles to the nearest grocery store. We basically could not, we had a little convenience store thing in our town, but to get normal groceries, we had to go 70 miles each way in the snow, uphill both ways. <laughs> uh, literally. <laughs> actually, it was literally because you went down and then you went back up again. But here's the thing. Once a month with a baby and a toddler and mom, mm -hmm. I would get in the car, drive into town for the day, go get my groceries for the month and come back home. And that's how we did it. And then um, if I ran out of milk, I just didn't use milk. You just made dishes that didn't call for milk. I kept dry milk on hand for baking. We just did not drink milk. If we ran out of juice or whatever, we didn't drink juice. We didn't drink juice anyway. But if we would have ran out of juice, we wouldn't have just gone to the store and bought it. And so by following the ads, that is how you can keep your grocery prices way down. Even in my little dinky town, I've got a Walmart and two grocery stores. I don't have an Aldi. I don't have a Save-A-Lot. I don't have a Winco. I don't have a... Publix. Costco. I don't have a Costco. I don't have a Sam's. I don't have any of those money saving places. I just shop the ads this week. <clears throat> well, I can't get to my freezers anyway. <laughs> my freezers are taped off because they're painting my kitchen cabinets. But if I could get to my freezers, I wouldn't put anything in them this week because there's nothing on sale that I need this week. But I'm not worried about it. Why? Because my freezers are jam full of deals that I've been finding for the last, oh, what, October to, to December, January was really good deals. I mean, I was just stocking up and stocking up. I haven't been to the grocery store for, uh, well, probably close to a month now because we've just been eating from what we have on hand. So, well, and even like today now, I haven't been out for weeks to the grocery store either, or yesterday it was, and I went, stopped at the one store, and I only stopped at the one, not Walmart or anything, because they had two things on sale, or one thing on sale that I wanted to get. It was cheese, and I got my cheese, and that was the only thing I got in like three weeks time or more was the cheese, because it was on sale. Yep. And that's why you don't always see the prices, I think, because... I don't think people look at their ads or something, maybe. Is that why? They, they I not? think they don't look at their ads. They're not willing to go to different grocery stores. They're not willing to change what they eat. Yeah. Um, because you're also not going to be able to just go to the grocery store and buy what you feel like eating. I mean, if your debt is 100% paid off, your house is paid off, your student loans, your 
cars, excuse me, your credit cards. Your retirement is 100% funded, so you could retire today if you want to. You go to the grocery store and buy what you want. Yeah. That's totally fine. But as long as you're in hock up to your eyeballs and your retirement isn't set and you're needing to be retired or whatever, you're still going to be cutting the corners. And you can't just go buy a steak if you feel like eating steak. You can't just go buy boneless, skinless chicken if you feel like eating it, if it's not on sale. And that's usually what the problem is. People are saying, I can't get prices like you get. It's more like, I, I can't find to. the prices on the things I want. Yeah is what you're really probably translating that it as. Yeah. And the other thing is you're going to have to be stopping buying a bunch of junk too. I'm sorry. I, I just, Oh, it was all I could do. As a matter of fact, I almost paid the lady a hundred dollars to do it. I'm serious. I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. I was at Walmart the other day. I've seen the same thing. I, first of all, her, her bill, I sat there and watched. So first of all, somehow I ended up following them around the store. I wasn't actually following them around the store. They just kept ending up where I was. I had that then we ended up at the checkout at the same time. They were on this checkout. I was on this one. So as Mike was checking out, I conveniently just stepped over to be looking at some things. <laughs> I was waiting to see what their bill was. $242. And I'm not exaggerating. There was two days worth of food in there. Everything else, there had to have been at least $150 to $175 worth of just drinks. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. They had Gatorade. They had electrolyte water. They had sodas. They had juice. They had coffee. They had bottled coffee. Uh -huh. And then all of the food they did have was all pre-cut up this and pre-cut up that. And no offense, I, I'm not trying to be, I'm not being judgmental. I today was roaming around town and I looked like a homeless person. Oh, you should have seen her before the show. She's not exaggerating at I look all. bad. Oh I'm just saying, I, I know said, rich I said, people is, can is, look bad. Is that a new look for you for the live stream tonight? <laughs> But let me just say, they weren't looking like they could be really affording to spend $242 on all of this stuff. And so, and, and I'm just like, and then people complain about their grocery bill. Well, so we, we talked about this before, guys, and I just challenge you or dare you to take your grocery receipt for one month and add up what you've got in there for drinks. I bet you anything, time and time again, it's things. like one third, one third of your grocery <clears throat> bill, I bet you will be drinks. And I'm talking about sugar for your coffee, cream for your coffee, uh, all the juice drinks, yep. uh, tea, flavored water and, stuff. Yeah, yeah, and all that kind of stuff, bottled water, mm -hmm. everything that's liquid that you will use for drinks. Oh. You add that up, and I bet you anything, it's close to one third of your your grocery bill at least all right so if you want to save on your grocery bill guys <coughs> dining on a dime cookbooks volume one <coughs> volume two 35 percent off and our gluten-free dairy-free cookbook living on a dime.com if you want to cut your grocery bill i guarantee you our cookbooks will <coughs> help you cut your grocery bill living on a dime.com our valentine's day sale has started now and for those of you wondering we do have our planners we have a few planners left and I am going probably next week to get the next batch of them. So if you are looking for our undated daily planners, we have those. It's glorious. Don't worry that you missed January. You could start at the very beginning and just keep going. And that's why they're undated. All right. Number four is, is X a good price? Yeah, okay. zero. You should have put zero good price. <laughs> so this one kind of irritates uh, me a little bit too. <laughs> well, now one thing, I don't know if this kind of goes with this or not, but Part of this, too, you guys are going to have to kind of do a little bit of work here yourself. You know, you're going to have to do, we tend to want to just click on YouTube and have somebody tell us, you know, what what this is. You're going to have to start watching the prices yourself, looking at stuff, what's, you know, what's good prices and bad prices. And so some of this is, we, we can't just tell where you live and give you a yeah price. and we can't because we don't know your situation how many kids you have now, things like that we have a we have a digital printout a printable price book mike will put the link in there for you where i put what we normally play pay for grace 
price for groceries prices. Those are our target sale prices. And, and so I keep track of three stores, just write down my price at each store. And then when something is, is a lower price, I just take, erase that one and put the next newest price in there. So that way I just keep track. When I know bread is 98 cents, I need to stock up. When it's 87 cents, I need to stock up. And so I just keep track of the prices. But here's the thing. You can't email me and say, is self-rising, is this a good price for self-rising flour? Well, first of all, I don't buy self-rising flour. Self-rising flour is a huge waste of money. Just get regular flour and add your own baking powder and your own salt. We got that in the book, don't we? Yeah. And I mean, if you, if you want to make homemade self-rising flour, it's right here. Dining on a Dime, volume one, and at livingonadime.com, we have the recipe for self-rising flour. First of all, self-rising flour is one of the biggest wastes of money. Secondly, so I don't buy it. Secondly, she said, well, so what is a good price for flour? Well, I don't know what flour runs in your city. I know what it runs in my city, but for me to tell you my price and you live in Nome, Alaska, it's going to be a totally different price. I, I can't tell you what a good price is. You can probably find it a lot cheaper than I can because here in my town, staples really don't go on sale hardly at all like it did when I lived in the big city. When I lived in the big city, at least four or five times a year, I could get flour and sugar and all that on sale. Here, I haven't bought flour or sugar on sale for since we moved here, mm -hmm. ever. Because the grocery stores are the same price. The grocery store sale price is the same price as Walmart for me. Mm -hmm. So I just get it at Walmart because for me, that's the price. But secondly, you're going to have to do some work yourself and figure this stuff out. You can't just expect people to do all of it for you. Well, and even the price list she was talking about, that may seem like a lot of work, but what happens after a couple of weeks, uh, two or three weeks or whatever, you start getting the stuff numbers. You remember, you know, I know that 10 times 10 is 100 because I've said it for all these years. I don't have to write it out every time, like in school when I first was learning how to do it. And yeah. that's the same with this. The price book is just like a starter. And then it'll get easier and easier. The more you're, you need to pay attention is what you have to do. You, people just grab things off the shelf because that's what they want or they need and throw it in their basket. And they stand there talking on their phone while they're checking out and everything. No, I watch the prices on the cash register. Mm -hmm over and over you know and i look at the tag when i go to take it off the shelf i look at the price tag on there so it's just be more proactive is that the word i want and the other thing is people get so hung up on the the numbers the prices if you put in our tips into practice i don't care what your price is where you live what the price is or anything if you're practicing the tips we teach you're going to save money you know like eat less junk food doesn't matter what the price of junk food is where you are or anything like that if you're eating less junk food if you're eating portion control it doesn't matter what the prices of food is if you're eating like one portion instead of four portions worth of food you're going to save money so if, if you don't yeah if you can't do the prices even yet just follow our tips stop drinking sodas i mean i had one lady i am not exaggerating after i did a talk at a mops class one time she came up and she said, uh, she said, I think I know the answer to this, but I go through a gallon of milk a day and it's my husband and I and our toddler. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> that should last you three weeks. <laughs> and she wasn't joking. This woman spent at the time, I think, uh, milk was like $3 a gallon. She was spending over $100 a month just on milk for her grocery bill for three people. That's absurd. So just cut out. You don't need to be drinking soda. I'm sorry. You don't need but to be drinking Gatorade. Milk and juice you don't need to be drinking. You can drink that as a nutritional value for a meal. You know, like if you need a dairy for that meal, you can drink the milk for that. But start just drinking water 
to yeah. quench your thir thirst. Don't drink all this other stuff to quench your thirst. You, you yeah. see, we got it all mixed up here. You should, they used to just drink no, water. No, we don't have it mixed up. No, we don't. <laughs> you got it all mixed up. <laughs> and you know, and that's people, why you're not saying people are blaming about. obesity on everything. Except Every, for the fact that people are eating and drinking too, too many much. calories. And that's it. And they keep wanting to blame it and all the particles in the air and all this other weird stuff. Being, and being, being um, poor does not make you fat. I'm sorry. I have been poor and I have not been obese. And that is just an excuse for people to just eat all the macaroni and cheese they want and to eat all the ho-hos they want. It's not obesity it, for is not a poor disease by any stretch of the imagination. So people just need to get over that. Number five, how do, oh boy, oh dear. How do I save on organic, no. non-GMO <laughs> this one last? <laughs> okay, mother, you just go right ahead. Oh, thanks a First lot. First of all, how do you save on it? First of all, stop. Anything. Stop, um, stop eating it. There's absolutely no reason to eat GMO, grass-fed, organic. Mm. There's no reason. There's no health benefits at all, including uh -huh. the whole pesticide theory. None of those are even close. Th th Go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, I, that's fine. You got the article right here. It's just like, we have studied this. We studied it again before we were doing these questions and we get the same answer every time. And that is, I get really concerned when people are insisting upon eating this stuff because they're actually being duped into thinking they're eating more healthy. And you, it's kind of like some of the things we've been going through the past couple of years, you know, saying you got to get this or you're going to die type of thing. And now guess what? And now they're saying that thing is killing you. The thing is with organic food, people don't understand more people get food poisoning and die and get deathly sick from eating organic food. They think they're eating this really cool, healthy stuff. They're going to these fancy health food uh, stores and things like that. And they ship this stuff in from places like China. And I and they have marked on there that yeah. it's here in the US. And when they bring Mexico anything and... in from, the, from outside of the United States, any of these organic foods that they ship in, and you think you're getting them from right here from nice little farms, but they even put farms sometimes, the name of farms on there. And the farms are getting them from other places. And what they do is they fumigate these things to death. Now, I know fumigation. I lived in Japan and we lived in a fog of fumigation all the time because the bugs and the gross things, the diseases were so bad over there when I lived there that it, you can't even imagine. And I wouldn't touch. We weren't allowed to touch any of the food over there. And it was all organic GMO free, okay. all this. Just as a gardener, let me tell you, organic food is fer fertilized with poop. Okay? You know what grows in poop? E. coli. And lots of other things. It is not safe to eat organic food. It's not. And I'm sorry, I know we're going to get all the email and you just go ahead and send it and we're just going to delete it because I'm not going to put up with it. We have done video after video after video with this. But just think about it. It is organic. If you want organic fertilized food, it's going to be fertilized with poop. The ironic thing is you're thinking so, you're eating healthy and it's just the extreme opposite yeah. is what's happening. And, you know, I find it interesting the minute everybody started Go digging into the organic food, they started coming out with this vegetable wash. And I remember thinking, this was years ago, and I thought, why are they coming out with this vegetable wash stuff? We would just rinse our vegetables off, you know, really good, and eat them. Well, people were eating more organic food, and they needed to do scrubbing and putting it in soapy yeah. water and all this because there was more awful things that you could get. They even had, like, a I read on this article from um, Persimmons, that they grew here from seeds that came in from Turkey on an organic farm and people started dying from eating these organic persimmons. <clears throat> and they had herpes, uh, herpes A, I think it was Hepatitis. in it. Hepatitis. Oh, herpes. I knew it started, I knew it started <laughs> with age. I'm going to get some weird diseases here. But anyway, they get, you get this weird stuff. And like I said, 
most of our, we don't realize most of the organic food now in the United States is shipped in from other places and it's fumigated with anyway, yeah. pesticides anyway. So, you know, you're just throwing your money so, away. How do you say, just stop eating it. Yeah. That's a good way. Okay, guys, Dining on a Dime cookbooks, 35% off right now are gluten-free, dairy-free, and then volume one, volume two, 35% off right now for our Valentine's Day sales. So for all of you guys who emailed me asking, now we're having a sale. Our planners are in these, are almost 400 page undated planners. We still have some in stock and the next ones I'm getting ready to go pick up. So we have those in stock also. Number six, how do I lower my grocery bill? Okay. okay. Stop eating a bunch of junk. Stop drinking most of your calories. I'm not kidding. When the same person that I was at Walmart the other day, I was actually watching that grocery baskets. And I was going to go up to people and start saying, I'll give you $100 if I can film your grocery basket. And um, because I'm not kidding, probably half of the grocery baskets, more than half of it was drinks. Yeah. Drinks or junk food. That particular lady, theirs was like three quarters to 80% mm -hmm. drinks. But mm -hmm. everybody else, it, it's, it's all drinks. And it's not drinks that are healthy drinks either. And so, but even watch the your healthy ones, ads. you have to watch because they have a lot of calories. So you're yeah. spending buying expensive drinks, causing you to have calories. So then you go on an expensive diet. And yeah. So what, shop your sale ads. Stop being persnickety with your food. You buy what's on sale and you eat it. You don't just go to the grocery store and say, "Oh, well, I feel like steak today or shrimp or whatever." So use your leftovers. We don't push this quite use as much. Well. Use your leftovers. Guys. Stop use throwing away food. every bit of your food. Stop giving your kids so much food. Stop giving yourself so much food. Mm -hmm. Those are we, all ways to we, save. I your get so though. excited every week. I get one or two people saying that I went and started saving money on my grocery bill, but I lost weight too by using the portion control thing. Yep. I told Tara maybe we should go into the diet. Thing, you know, like what Weight Watchers or something, we get a lot of money that way or whatever. Yeah, I thought about actually doing a video on that <laughs> showing what a 1500 calorie diet actually looks like, and it doesn't cost it, costs and you it's less. not expensive. Yeah, all right. How do I save money when I can't buy in bulk? You oh, do not have don't. to buy in bulk. Costco and Sam's do not save you money. No, I'm sorry, you can find just as good deals, and really. 90% of the time, Costco's and Sam's does not actually save you money. It almost costs you money because you Especially take, on food. Yeah, you take all this food home. I've seen people get these huge containers of, you know, like sour cream or something like that for a family of two or three. And they end up throwing most of the, it away. They can't, you can't eat it fast enough, so you throw a good portion of it away. Besides having to find places to store it, we've got a whole thing on the website what is warehouse shopping is that what it's called i think uh, do warehouse uh, stores save money yeah so that's all about the talks about how it doesn't save buying in bulk go on there and read it on the um uh, on our website but we go into the details and just the work of having to go there and you always buy more and i have never since the date for for 50 years i have never bought in bulk because i have priced it over and over again and unless you have a family of like 10 people it doesn't really pay because yeah. you really do waste more time and energy repackage, repackaging the stuff or not eating it and throwing it away. Yep. Number eight, how do I find coupons? You do not need coupons I to could, save money on your grocery bill. So for 25 years, we've been saying Dining on a Dime Cookbook, Volume 1, 35% off right now, guys. You do not. It is, it is all about saving money on your grocery bill without using coupons. Mm -hmm. I'm not exaggerating when I say I only use five or 10 coupons a year. Now, I will do the digital coupons now every now and then, but normal old fashioned cutting out coupons, it doesn't save you money, really. And that's not the majority of the way. That's not the biggest way to save money on your grocery bill. Yeah. Number nine, how do I save money on groceries when I'm gluten free, keto, diabetic, whatever diet you're on? It is the same principles. If you just follow the principles, buy your food on sale for diabetics, stop eating so much food and you won't be diabetic anymore. It is 100% proven by the doctors. Now I totally get it. I know we're going to get that 5% of people 
that have type one diabetes or whatever, they've lost weight and they still have, I totally get that, but it is proven doctor, any doctor will tell you this. If you just lose weight by stop eating so much food, you won't be diabetic anymore. And so it's not, it's not the diet that's expensive. It's the food you're buying that's expensive. I have been on all of these diets and my grocery bill has not gone up for any of them that I have been on. So my grandma was on extremely low income when, when uh, for years. And I mean, lower than what we even have now for like welfare and that type of stuff. She was a diabetic and I didn't, she never ever even talked about you know, well, I have to eat this special or I have to buy this special or anything else. She just ate normal food. She just ate a smaller portion of it usually. But she, with diabetic diet, I don't know that it's really that extra special. I mean, you can it's eat awful. salads, you can eat meats, you can eat any kinds of Well, you can vegetables. eat bread and biscuits too. You just can't have five biscuits say, at a I was going to say, you can have even, like if you're having baked, go to somebody's home and they're having a baked potato, don't sit there and say, well, I, I have to have a diabetic diet. My grandma used to cut herself just a little piece of the baked potato and eat it with all the rest of the stuff. So it's kind of like, it's almost like a badge of honor. Yeah. You know, I'm, I have to have, it makes you feel kind of special. I yeah. think nowadays it's, it's a, you know, it's look, I'm, I'm kind of special. And so she never, ever even told anybody that she had diabetes and yet everybody now announces it and wants to know how can I have my, you do my special food. And if I was on any one of these diets, I wouldn't, well, I probably wouldn't do the keto period. But if I had to be on like a diabetic diet, I would just buy fruits and vegetables. I wouldn't buy any special diabetic foods because I couldn't afford it. So I would eat the meat and the vegetables and just those simple things. And if I had to do without, you know, carbs or something, I just would do without them. It's just that simple. But see, we don't want to do without anything. We want to be on all of our special diets, but we want to have all the food that we still want to eat anyway. That's where it gets messed up. That's where people start having trouble. If you if you're going to be on a special diet, you're going to have to do without. That's all there is to it, yep. you know. And number ten, Mike, go ahead and send me our your the questions over. How do I save on laundry detergent? <laughs> you're like Tara. This is groceries, but most people put their laundry detergent, their cleaning supplies, toilet paper, all that in with their grocery bill. I personally don't, but I know a lot of people do. Listen, stop using so much laundry detergent. Period. Stop doing so much laundry. I did a vi I recorded with my appliance repair guy pistol <laughs> <laughs> for three hours the other night. I you're gonna never know, you're gonna know all about appliances when that video comes I out. I never knew <laughs> there was so much to appliances that we were messing up. But it was up. interesting. But it was really, really good. It, it'll info. be eye opening. And let me for tell you, did you guys know that you are ruining your appliances by cleaning them? Ah, you are. And the same is true with laundry detergent. The laundry detergent is ruining washers because you're just using too much. Do you know what, how much laundry detergent you're supposed to use in a load of laundry? You're just going to die. And I'm going to tell you that, tell you the answer now, but uh, let me just see if anyone happens to have the answer real quick here. Post in the comments and let me know. Do you know how much actual laundry detergent you're supposed to use um, in your laundry? Let's just see. I can't get on Facebook here, but we've told I'll look you for on years YouTube. and years. You just Let's need to cut see. back on the laundry detergent. Mindy period. says two tablespoons. Uh, Crazy Cat Lady says one tablespoon. Denise says one tablespoon, two tablespoons, a quarter of a cup a half a cup, a third of a cup. Okay, none of you are right. One teaspoon. One teaspoon, he said, is all you need. And he said people are ruining their washers because they're putting in the full cup load. Guys, those cups aren't there to help you. They're there to sell, sell more, more laundry, laundry detergent. detergent. And we've been teaching this for a long time to use less laundry detergent because years ago I got a washer from 
uh, Sweden. It was the first front loading. Larcher, yep. Front, it, nobody else, nobody else that I knew of, nobody had ever seen one like that except at a laundromat. It was the first one that was front loading. And I got this almost, well, 25, 30 years ago. And the thing they did with the instructions on that machine, they said the first load of laundry, the first time you put laundry in that machine, don't add any laundry detergent to it. And I thought, oh, that's gross. They said, wash that load of clothes with no laundry detergent. And I did, and I was watching it while it was, because it was fascinating to watch it back then, you know, because it was such a new thing. There was bubbles coming out of these, these dirty clothes that I stuck in there yep. and just bubbles everywhere. If you're, the clothes don't get clean. If your clothes are dingy or something, you're, you usually have too much mineral built up in your water or m mostly it's the laundry detergent. Those clothes came out so sparkling white, I could not believe it. So, you know, cut back. We've been it's actually making your clothes look, look dirtier. Worse. So then you start adding, the residue. you know, I use borax sometimes. Once every three months, I'll put it in with my loads of laundry. But everybody's adding all this and that and the other, and you're just adding too much. I wonder half the time if that's not why people have skin problems and mm -hmm. itching. Part of it could be that we're just so obsessive in about washing these things over and over in all this laundry detergent. So, yep. All right, we're going to get to your questions now. So post them in the comments. Mike will send them to me. He sent me the first list here. First of all, everyone is so glad you're alive. Oh, Mother. thank you, guys. Oh, I appreciate your prayers I'm and everything. I'm glad that you're alive. Thank you. If you guys, so yesterday's <laughs> video, that was just the highlights. Oh, you guys. We didn't actually <laughs> tell you everything, everything that was going on. <laughs> And this uh, morning we woke up to a dead deer in oh our front my, yard. I know you can't believe it. It's laying out there now as we and speak. That's yeah. We're, we got it. And so I call game and wildlife, and they're like, "Oh, just take it to the dump." <laughs> I, I, okay, let me throw it on the top of my Toyota Camry, <laughs> and I'll haul it down to the dump. <laughs> Okay. We were on the phone. I know I'm in Wyoming. Then I said, well, just throw it in the back of the trunk. Couldn't you see them driving in the back of the trunk with the legs sprawled out and all this other stuff? I'm like, oh my goodness, we gotta film that one. <laughs> I can just see the comments on that one. I can't wait till the guys haul that thing. <laughs> it's just dead as a doornail in my front yard. Dave this oh. morning was like, uh, I think there's a dead deer in our yard. We're like, what? He said, Well. It wasn't moving when I was looking at it, and I was yelling at it, and it didn't move. <laughs> I was like, oh, lovely. So then our contractors were here, and they said, if we call the trash company, he said that here in our town, they'll come pick it up. I don't know. Oh, the hell is No, he, he was saying the trash company. Ugh. But I don't care. You, you call whoever you want. <laughs> Just I call Game it. and Wildlife, and they're like, throw it on top of your car and take it to the dump. I'm like, <laughs> okay, let me bicycle it over there. <laughs> I mean, what if you don't have a car? I was going to say, how am I supposed to throw a deer in my car? It's not, I mean, it's not huge, but it's big enough. Uh, <laughs> big into Bernie's, Mike said. <laughs> I told him, I said, get Mike out there and get him to skin that thing. And get well, it. I know. I wish I would have known what to die for. I could have me some good jerky. So <laughs> now I hope it's not frozen to the ground. It snowed today. So now I hope the thing's not frozen to the ground. One thing nice about Wyoming, you just don't have to even go hunting your meat. It just dies in your front yard and everything. We don't have to worry about meat. So, oh, somebody said I should put it on eBay. <laughs> put it on eBay. Oh, you know, that would be funny just to oh, see what goodness. you would get. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Yeah. Well, somebody said the Snoopy mug that I got for free was $111 on I eBay. So I don't think Mike needs a Snoopy uh, He's not cup worth, as he's not much as. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so so mom, so mom is alive. I am alive. But it did bring up a good question in my mind. Oh, great. What question? You didn't tell me. I thought you? about doing a poll on this. So everyone's like, oh, it's no big deal. Just come on in. We just want to make sure you're okay. And I'm sitting here thinking, you obviously have health insurance that covers everything, don't you? Because I'm sitting here thinking like every single person, just call the ambulance. 
just called in there. So then I got to thinking, how much is it really worth to go in? I know. Really think I about know. this. If you're having a heart attack, let's say you're having a heart attack. And it's actually a heart attack. And you don't have very good insurance or no insurance or something. And you go in and you come out with $500,000 worth of ICU bills. Your is, life is almost over anyway. Because is it of, worth continuing your life having those bills on top of having a heart attack? I don't think so. I don't mean to laugh, but that's why Tara wasn't in too big of a hurry to get me to the emergency. Well, I'm sitting here thinking, okay. If <laughs> no, this but was I, me, I know what she's saying. I kept telling her in the car, I said, if I go, just let me go. You know, don't worry about it. Because there's a point where we're just going to have to die, all of us. Well, and I'm sitting here thinking, okay, maybe if it was me, it might be worth twenty or $30,000. But once we start getting over $30,000, I'm not really sure it's worth surviving me well am I, I worth okay you answer am i worth 30 you can bring, bring yourself on head. no bring yourself on tell our viewers his head what head dollar up. amount is it worth us paying to keep me alive oh poor mike when he, uh, she gets the uh, this, he gets through me i would pay a lot dear yeah but would it really be worth it though if we were saddled with a half a million dollars for being in ICU for a heart attack. Is that really worth it? Seriously? Well, no, I mean, one of the kids, you come to it. I could see paying that for, for one of my kids. kids. But somebody my but for age. For me? Or I'm already for 50. My age. Yeah. Is that really worth it? I don't think it is. <clears throat> I don't think it's worth it for my age group because because then you have the stress of all of that. So we've been having some real deep stuff. To because I was talking about. to a man the other day and he has cancer. I understand, you know, and I, I try was trying to be sympathetic. But he said, well, and it's only stage one and they're pretty sure it's going to be taken care of very easily. You know, so it's not like it's gone through his whole body and all this type of stuff. So he said, yeah, but he said. Well, if it's really bad, I may only have five or 10 years to live. You know, I said, that means you'll be 85 years old. Because he was thinking, my life, you know, that's not very long, much longer for me to live. But 85, I think that's living to a ripe old age, isn't it, really? I would think so. I don't want to go a whole lot past that because past 85, you start slowing down. Things get much harder. I guess Tara and I understand when you feel... We, I always say we have the bodies of like an 85-year-old person, you know, be, with our chronic fatigue syndrome for as much as we... Go ahead. <laughs> Speak you've for yourself, mother in law You've seen her pictures, Elena, <clears throat> on the ground. So, you know what I mean? So, um, I don't know if I would... I would pay for the kids and the grandkids. So, somebody says there's no price on your life. Actually, I think there is. I really do. I'm sorry. But if I had a heart attack... And even if I was alive and I was saddled with five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars worth of ICU bills, what's the point of living if you have that kind of debt hanging over your head and you lose everything and you can't you have could a quality even, you of could life even anyway. become homeless see, in a situation like that? You could lose everything. I don't know. Just it's just a question. About. It's just a just question. Something to think about. So some people are thinking that you're basically saying that society should just let people die, i.e., like the government. Oh no. I'm not saying that society or people should just or that lives aren't worth it. I think you should determine your own self if it's worth it. Kind of like but, what, do, should you be resuscitated or not? If you write, I don't necessarily want to. But the thing is, if they didn't have socialized medicine or the way on to, or the way to socialized medicine. You would be able to afford these things and, you know, you'd be able to afford a heart attack, but I don't know. It's just something to think about. <laughs> All right. Now. So uh, if I'm not here next week, you know, she just let me kick, kick the bucket. Just saying. <laughs> Jeannie, I opened a bag of flour and that was a year and a half old, made some bread and it came out just fine. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I just had finished it. up a, a, from when we moved 18 months ago. I brought flour with me that was already expired. Yeah. 
And I just finished it up and it was just fine. Yeah, I had it a long, long time. Sarah wants to know how long does popcorn kernels last? A really long time. You know, don't throw them out. Mm -hmm. On all of this stuff, don't throw it out. Take and put a couple kernels in a pan, see if it pops, you know. If it does, use it. Don't just auto. That's one thing everybody's doing. They're just automatically tossing it when they see the expiration just date. Just cook it and see. Cook it and see what it's like. Because you will not get poisoned or sick from this stuff. It will just not taste, taste as good. Taste good. Poppy says she had some freezer burned steak from 2000. Excuse me, 2005 mm -hmm. that they just made and they made it into stir fry and it was great. Yeah. yeah. If you season it up like that, you can still use it. So I thought about, we were talking about my grandmother name. No, there's no announcements or anything, but. Your grandmother how name? Americans don't have very good grandmother's name. And I decided if I become a grandmother ever, I think I will be called Poppy. Poppy? I thought they called the grandpa's Poppy. Oh. I don't know. Maybe. Well, since I like flowers, maybe Daisy. No, Poppy would be good. I think Poppy would What about would be Lavender? <laughs> I think they should call me Delphinium. <laughs> yeah, I can see a toddler saying that. <laughs> Delphinium. Delphinium! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Lynn, have you found out what fruit trees do well in Wyoming? Uh, apples. Apples. <laughs> apples. <laughs> That's it. Tell. Apples. And even then, it's a crapshoot because... Apples. Now, the reason why apples is because they bloom later, but peaches are non-existent here. Pears are almost non-existent. And the weather is just so bad here that fruit trees just don't do very good. Um, Denise says, I want to make some grab and go breakfast for my family. For a family that just lost their husband, father, I love your books. What would you suggest? They don't need to be, but grab and go. Well, I mean, you could make like breakfast, bacon, egg, and cheese breakfast sandwiches. burritos. Yeah. Breakfast burritos are really, and you can yeah. put them in the freezer. They can keep yeah. them in the freezer. Get English muffins and make uh, 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 egg, egg, bacon, and cheese sandwiches like McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You could do that. You could do like burrito bowl type things for breakfast, but like egg bowls. I don't know what they're called, but like. Just make up the eggs and and we may have hash a, browns and all that. A breakfast burrito on the website. I'm not sure. Well, we do in volume two of Dining on a Dime we? Cookbook. Thirty five percent off right now for a Valentine's Day sale, guys. And especially if they have teenagers. One. I know Tara's yeah. kids would make those up all the time, and they're yeah. real easy and keep them frozen. Um. Let's see. Echoing says I keep some. Cho I've kept some chocolate in my freezer that was four years, and they were still good. Yeah. Oh, candy. Can, yeah, you're fine. I think candy can last a long time. Yeah. I've never had <laughs> that yeah. long to know, but I it's supposed to last a long time. Um, Anne says there's an app called Flip that is very helpful, yes, for finding store ads. Yes, mm -hmm. a lot of people recommend that one. I personally don't have it. I only have three stores. It's not like I have a lot of choice mm -hmm. here. So, Tammy, when you freeze milk cheese, how long do they last since you know, another six to, six to nine months at least, if yeah. not a year? Yeah. Laura says, love your cornbread recipe in volume one. I can't get enough of it. I found butter for $1.49 a pound. is that a good cornbread? I love that cornbread. Wow. In Oklahoma, my son's in Oklahoma. Maybe yeah. I should tell him to go get some and we'll go down and, and visit. Um, Ida, lake quarters are on sale for 38 cents a pound. Wow. That's a great deal. On the milk, I wanted to say, don't panic if the milk looks curdly and funny when you freeze it. That's not spoilish. You just need to shake it really hard so <laughs> Marilyn says my grandkids could call me queen mother queen I mother think that's perfect think of queenie queenie queen mumsy they could call you queenie <laughs> uh, I think that would be great to actually finally get queen the proper mom. respect queen I mom. deserve <laughs> uh Lori says what's the difference in breading with self-rising flour versus all-purpose flour so self-rising flour has baking powder and salt in it so it's just going to get fluffier on your breading just add that to your flour and you've got self-rising flour volume one dining on a dime cookbook 35 percent off right now how long does powdered milk last forever yeah i mean i have some I, that's from 2016 that i'm using right now the worst so. it does it sometimes it'll if it gets any moisture it'll clump no. a little bit but i just dissolve yeah. it in the water barbara so. wants to know is there dry milk for half and half cream yes there is mm -hmm. dried cream that you can you buy also it's can get dried, but you dried can get butter milk too um let's see cynthia says i make a triple batch of the dining on a dime baking powder biscuits those are my baking powder biscuits 
then pre-assemble them all with sausage, ham, bacon, chicken, Good idea. cheese wrap individually. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Uh, Kimberly, why do you think Walmart doesn't have ads anymore? I've never had a Walmart have ads. I haven't either. So I don't know. I, my Walmarts have never had ads. Beverly, uh, please don't get me started on, I can't shop for food because I have four kids. I shopped with four. Oh, me too. Please yeah. don't <laughs> even. And you know what? I never once, never once bought anything for mm -hmm. my kids that they asked for at the grocery store. And so my kids knew, don't ask for it because you ain't going to get it. Mm -hmm. I, I never once bought them anything just because they asked for it. Unless it was on sale or clearance, like it was donuts or something that was on sale or clearance. But my kids knew when we were up to the candy bar aisle, they weren't going to get oh, candy no, bar. I like never that. asked. They never got anything special. I went there for my groceries and that's what I was getting. Yeah. Yeah. These people who say they can't shop with kids, please. It's just because you're not and being you, a parent. You, I, I don't know how many times. Well, almost every time I see people with kids now, the kids have this whole pile of a little bag of chips yeah. and a bottle of drink something or another and a candy mm -hmm. bar and just like a handful of stuff. And I I've just never seen anything like that. You can it. ask my kids too, and they'll tell you my they're abused. That's what's wrong with my grandkids. They never I knew got it. There was a reason. <laughs> Stephanie says, "How they from Frederick, Colorado? I know oh, exactly where that is. Yeah. My grandma lives there. Mm -hmm. I made your chicken Alfredo, her son's favorite. That is in volume two, thirty-five percent off right now for a Valentine's sale. Living on a dime dot com, guys. Very good. That's I love that. That is delicious." Oh, Stephanie from the school? Yeah. Oh, oh, we know you, Stephanie. I didn't realize it was the same person. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, Mike used to talk to her when we were waiting for kids, uh, when he was waiting for kids in the pickup line um, at school. Pamela, I just got 24 pork chops for 20 spare ribs for $25. Wow. Wow. That's probably not bad. Yeah. Cindy says she's paying off her car next month. You go, girl. Way to go. That is great. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Single guy, simple life says they're not willing to drive 30 minutes to find deals. I'm sorry. There's no reason why you can't drive an hour to an hour and a half to go get deals. You can't. My mom used to sorry. drive to the, she yeah. lived in a Boulder and she used to drive to Denver, but with traffic and everything, it would take her an hour to drive to the commissary. And she did that, you know, like, Every two weeks, she would drive an hour through Denver traffic to go to the commissary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just making up your mind. Do I want to do this? Do I really want yeah. to save the money to yeah. do this? Um, Let's see. Diane. And she brought um, groceries for eight people when she did that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, Diane, we are guilty of our spitting on drinks for years. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dorothy, tell me about the two heart-shaped pin chain that you wear. Oh, the other day, I ha I think I got it at, um, at a thrift store. It was like a quarter. And it was two little tiny hearts, and they had a chain that connected them together. I don't wear it too often, but I like it a lot. So, yeah. Um, let's see, Robinson. <laughs> I'm sorry for picking on you, Robin. She says, I'm so sorry I sent you the other day. Is this a good price? I didn't know it irritated you. <laughs> so here's the thing. I'm sorry for picking on you, Robin. <laughs> but it here's the thing. Robin I'm not kidding. Every single day we get, there's, there's like a list of 10 questions we get every and day. These were the ones that we were going through. But the thing is, most people just don't want to do the work. I can't do the work for you. Mm -hmm. but they want you to do the work. Like I can't force you to drink water, but you've got to make the decision. Is it worth me saving $175 on my grocery bill this week to not have so many sodas? Because but like people now, don't want to do that, now we're so. talking about telling everybody to drink water and to save money. Well, then next week, everybody's going to be saying, well, how do I save money on my grocery yeah. sit bill again? And it's going to be uh -huh. with the drinks yeah. and they haven't cut but back. Sorry, I did not mean to pick <laughs> no, on <we're> the <laughs> And you know what, too? Some of these comments we get, there's a tone to them. Yeah. <laughs> there's a really a tone to them. From some to some people write really nice questions. They just don't know. You know, some people just really want to. But then there's other ones that have a different attitude when they write. And those ones are the ones she's mm. 
pretty much answering today. And she's probably got another one right now. I can tell. No, I just <laughs> was thinking of the comments. I'm just like. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we can tell a difference. And we, those of you that an, ask in a nice way, we don't mind, you know. Answering. So Priscilla says, this is the same thing. I just started watching your channel. <laughs> what do you think of buy one, get one free items? Are they really a deal? I don't know. What is the price? If, if it's $5.50 for two boxes of Cheerios, buy one, get one free. So that means that it's what, $2.75 a box? No, that's not no. a good deal. Because they go on sale for much cheaper than that. That's where you have to kind of you start have to learning. You have to just figure your, it out. Yeah. Start writing. If you have to at first, write down the prices to remember and compare. And uh, you'll just start having to learn it. Now Tara knew exactly how much Cheerios should cost, yeah. you know. Send me the next mic. Uh, Jen says, buy whole carrots instead of already peeled and shredded. Don't pay for convenience for a few months worth of work. Now, I have never, ever, ever, ever bought shredded carrots. I have bought peeled, though, but only because the baby carrots cost the same. They're, well, not the same. It's like literally three cents more. Yeah, if, they're, if the they're baby the carrots price, that I get, we know what but, you're saying. Yeah. Usually, those convenient things. Uh -huh. We have a yeah. pet peeve about that ourselves. You My know, hair is sticking up again. Oh dear. Here. Okay, I was looking disheveled. <laughs> you're looking better than you were earlier that's for sure oh my goodness i was uh, so we started cleaning up drywall dust today they finished the drywall section today oh my goodness you should see the mess i have i just from my fireplace to my sliding glass doors took me two hours can you imagine what her christmas tree that she has decorated all the time looks like with, with it sheet, was bad with sheet it rock was dust. really bad so it's really, really bad. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So anyway, uh, Nancy Robin says, that is me. She's talking about, no. <laughs> <laughs> about their ways. It's okay, Robin. I'm sorry. I did not mean to pick no. on you. And like I said, we, we know the <laughs> attitude of most of you guys. You were very nice about it too, by the way. But she said, she saw the two ingredients. So here's the thing. Uh, here's my quandary. <laughs> so super easy recipes. My other YouTube channel where I put up videos on easy recipes that are cheap and easy. I use two ingredient dough, self-rising flour and Greek yogurt. I think is that one. The problem is I cannot convince people to make their own self-rising flour. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting out videos on super easy recipes that use convenience foods that frankly are a huge waste of money, but it's still cheaper for you to go make those biscuits or make those bagels or non bread or whatever, cinnamon rolls, whatever, with the two ingredient dough than to go buy them pre-made or at McDonald's or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a quandary because frankly, I don't like putting out those recipes, but people insist on buying self-rising flour. And all it is is baking powder and salt. And it literally takes you no more time. I mean, I'm sorry, 30 seconds maybe to add baking powder and salt to your mm -hmm. to your flour. But I can't and convince you can even, people. You could even mix your own up ahead of time and keep it stored, you know, if you needed to. Too. But I can't convince people of that. So anyway, Nancy said, you may have to drive. I drive 26 miles to Aldi's and Walmart. Yeah, that's what I was doing. But, you know, 26 so. miles, that's really not that far. Tar yeah. used to drive just to do 70 miles just for, way. well, I mean, even in Denver, just for everyday things, oh, you would it was like drive the kids miles, to school yeah. far than that. You yeah. know, she drove the kids way yeah. farther. So nowadays it's not that unusual to drive 20 miles or more. Yeah. So it shouldn't be that yeah. too, too bad. Uh, do I make my own non-dairy milk? Sometimes, Deidre. I just really don't use it that much. Um, so when I use it, yes, I make my own rice milk. I don't use almond milk. I use mostly rice milk for my non-dairy cooking. So yeah. So anyway, all my non-dairy milks, rice, uh, what do I have? I think I have rice, almond. I can't remember all the ones I have in here. Let me see if I could see almond, cashew, coconut, alternatives, oat, and rice are the ones that I have in our Dining on a Dime cookbook. And yes, they are a lot cheaper than buying it already pre-made. Almond, maybe not so much now because almonds have gone up. 
So you need to price compare to see how much it's going to cost you to buy the almonds versus buying the milk. Um, but 35% off right now, livingonadime.com for a Valentine's sale, guys. Um, I just have stopped, since I'm not doing sugar, I just have stopped baking and all that kind of stuff. So I just don't. I just don't do hardly any anymore. Um, let's see. Minnie says there's BJ's. We've never had one of those. So I hear people say they really like it. I remember time, you stood in front of that place one time holding BJ with getting the picture and it has big letters that has BJ on it. Well, yeah, but that was that wasn't a store. That was a restaurant. Was it? Oh, a restaurant. Yeah, I that see. was a restaurant. Um let's see. M Pennington uh, or Mindy says, or wait, yeah. Uh, in Pennington, I love looking at people's carts at Sam's Club piled high. I know. I, know. I thought about I have to go to Colorado to get the planners. I thought about going into Sam's and Costco and filming some carts. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> you can't afford groceries. This is why people. <laughs> but I don't know. It's well, one thing about day, those so places too to is most people buy quite a bit more than what they originally planned on when they go in there, you know, they just yeah. taste the samples. So then they go get this and they, yeah. there's a reason they do those samples and you spend more money just in doing that alone. Besides the fact, yeah. all their prices aren't always that much cheaper. If you really are keeping track of prices, they're not always that much cheaper. Some things just like any other store, some things are on sale and they're a little cheaper and some things once in a while yeah. at Costco is, yeah. but to get everything there thinking you're saving money. Yeah. Kristen says, if I could buy one book, which would you recommend for stretching your dollar or volume one? Yeah. It has all the basics, like how to make taco seasoning, how to make honey baked chicken, literally five minutes, maple glazed chicken, salad dressing, oatmeal yeah. ideas, biscuits, all those super easy things that you can make. And honestly, I don't spend more than 15 or 20 minutes usually cooking dinner. I don't because the mm. recipes are just so fast and easy and cheap. And I spend four hundred dollars. I've got two teenage boys and a husband, and I spend about four hundred dollars a month on groceries. So that's really good. So. I made our sour cream enchiladas that's in there the other night, and I timed myself, and it took me about four minutes yeah. to slap them all in the pan and put it all in the pan, and just, and that's it was that. all ready. And then add another two minutes and make you some Spanish white rice if you want, or cut up some baby carrots or whatever, and it's easy. Um, Cheryl says she spent $97 on groceries at Aldi and got a lot of meat. Will last my brother, I think she's saying her brother and her, for three weeks. Very good. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good job. I miss Aldi so much. Um, all right. Let me see here. Oh, Kimmy's on. Hello. She's in her apron. <laughs> we love Kimmy. Kimmy's our friend. <laughs> So, Tara, if we were together away from our husbands traveling somewhere and we get into a bad accident and I had to make a decision if you live or die, do I say now she wants me to pull the plug? Yes. <laughs> just let me go, Kimmy. <laughs> I'll just be fluttering above you on the way home. <laughs> They're going to think you're suicidal next. It's like we get some of the most interesting things. <laughs> Uh, no, but I mean, you got to think about these things. <laughs> is it really worth? Because they were sitting there, like every person told mom, oh, no, you come on in. It's it's good. And be I'm sitting there thinking, how much is this going to cost me and the whole time? I, probably, so no wonder my high blood pressure went up. I can't imagine. We were two hours there. I can't imagine oh, it's going to be imagine. any less than $15,000. Well, I talk, Maybe, I but... talk to a viewer who's really good about paying her bills and getting, trying to get things paid off and everything. And she said she's had to go to the emergency room, call an ambulance, go to the emergency room last summer. I think it was last summer. But anyway, it was several months ago. And she said she's still working on paying off that bill, you know. And so you got to. People say, oh, just go to the emergency room. I'm sorry. You got to be a little selective on when you're going. Like mm -hmm. when I fell and hit my head, it was only two hours until the doctor's office opened. I'm like, I'm not paying even 20% to go to the emergency room and get a CAT scan and an MRI and all this other stuff. I'll just go to the doctor first. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I don't know. Um. Oh, dear. Cheryl's going to get picked on now. Oh, no. Nobody's going to come back next week. <laughs> she said, I'm retiring four weeks to 65. Going to put in a garden with family's farm this year. Can't wait. Going to draw my social security. I love your cookbooks. But she also says, 
how do you stop doing so much laundry? It can't be done. <gasps> I'll let you be the bad, the bad cop this, this I, time. I love, this is my subject that I love so much. I'm not sure why people have been coming obsessed. She's retired, so she doesn't probably have kids at home. She shouldn't have more than two loads of laundry a I, week. No, oh my goodness. I That's do, yeah. That's stretching it if, if they, you wash your sheets two of them, yeah. I take and I do one load of laundry about every 10 days is what I do. I'm retired. Now I'm by myself. So you can maybe double that if there's two of you um, and that type of thing. Why are you changing your clothes so much? You should wear clothes outside gardening. You can wear those garden clothes, even if they're dirty when you come in. Wear them again the next day. You're going to be out in the mud and gardening and doing all that. You don't need to put clean ones on every day to go out in the garden. You know, I wear what I call my work clothes during the day, and those I wear all week long. And they're just my work clothes. If I'm going to go to the grocery store or someplace special, I will change into a little bit neater clothes, wear them when I go, and then I come home and hang them up again. And I'll wear them three or four times because I only have them on for an hour or two. They're not that dirty. So there's so many ways to do this that you, now I do change my undies, you know, every day, but because you do have, most people wear undies, it doesn't get the rest of your clothes. I wear my bra for a week. Oh, yeah, I do too. Well, I didn't, I meant my undies. No, undies. I know. My bra. But I, I wear, mean, a lot yeah. of people change their bra every single day. I yeah. Know. Yeah, I don't get stinky. I don't I was get sweaty. Say, unless Why? it's stinky and sweaty. Yeah, and during cooking. garden season, I do more you often. Might. So you might. Because have, you I'm do, sweating and And in the dirt. summer, I probably change them a little bit more than in the wintertime. But, yeah, I can't even imagine doing that much laundry, really. Um, so I hope that, you know, does that make sense? So you get to be the bad cop this time. Thanks. <laughs> but but no. I have four people in my family, and I do about... Three, three to four, but about three. I do about three loads of laundry every 10 days, the equivalent. That's including Dave's, Dave does his own laundry, but that's including Dave's laundry that he does. But, and another thing, if you have kids, oh my goodness. One thing I never did, now Tara did this, but she did train her kids different, you know, to do it. And if you train them, that's okay. But with kids, I never let the kids do the laundry. I mean, they helped me with the laundry, but not do their own. Because they tend to take five or six T-shirts and a pair of jeans and throw it in and run the whole wash machine with a ton of soap and do the laundry like this, you know, a lot, especially girls. They'll try an outfit on and say, oh, I don't like this. And they'll take it off. And instead of putting it back, hanging it up or whatever in their drawer, they just throw it on the floor. Then when they have to clean the room up, all these clean clothes go into the hamper and then they wash them. And so that's how more laundry is, you know, made that way, too. So you got to watch your kids a little bit and supervise them. for If you are going to let them do their own laundry, supervise what they're doing. I think you've caught the boys a couple of times where they had clean clothes, you know. And so you have to kind of watch that a little bit. But, uh, you know, don't and even people come home from adults. They'll take and have a work outfit and they sit in the office, not sweating, nothing all day long. And they'll come home and throw those things in the dirty clothes. You could wear those another day, a couple, a couple of several different days. You don't have to wear it the very next day. You can wait till next week to wear it again. But, you know, I towels. Oh, towels are a big thing. I scrub my body clean. I don't know about anybody else, but I take a shower so I can scrub my body clean. So I step out of the shower with a clean body. And I dry off my clean body with a clean towel. Now, it does not hurt to hang that towel up, let it dry, and use it, you know, two or three times, your own towel over and over again. Don't get a clean towel every time, you know, you're doing, take a shower. So there's all, we have a whole laundry thing. We even have a laundry book. But we've got a whole thing of laundry on the website, too, that you can check out, of tips and ideas. Oh, what happened? So, oops, wait a minute, it popped off. Uh, somebody just said her husband and kids refused to wear the clothes a second time. I'd be having some words. <laughs> here's the three pair you get this week. Yeah, here's, here's the three, three pair you get this week, and I ain't washing until 10 days from now, so you better figure it out. 
Oh, and I would charge the kids. I was just going to say, I would, take I would, it out I would do some way to charge them. The husband, them. okay, I could see maybe a little bit, but... Mm. But yeah, I would start figuring out a plan to charge them and make them do all the washing, the folding, mm -hmm. and you supervise. Don't just yeah. let the, you have to supervise and make them do the work. Rebecca wants to know the teaspoon of laundry soap that was for both front loading and top loader, but he said also that top loading washers are useless now. You shouldn't even buy them. They're not even worth anything. So I thought well, that's very interesting. Um, Jeannie says, when my husband was alive, we never got out of Costco for less than $350. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Don't you appreciate your husband? <laughs> I am greatly appreciating you now. Yes. Now. No, she said now. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, they still want to know what you eat every day. I, I took pictures. Oh, for a week? Uh-huh. Oh, well, you never sent them to me. No, I didn't. Oh. I was having to talk to you. I've got, I've got pictures of what I eat. Okay, so, so I guess we're doing that video soon. The thing I is, know. I eat normal food. I just don't eat a whole lot of normal food. Um, I mean, eat a portion-wise. Like, I made um, um, sweet and sour enchiladas, the recipe that we have in the no, book. No, she made sour cream enchiladas, not sweet and sour <laughs> enchiladas. <laughs> I got sweet on the brain. I was thinking of sugar or something it's been earlier a long today, week, guys. Oh, terrible week. But anyway, um, I made those, and that was like four to five meals in just a. I made just a small pan of them, you know, and that was at least four to five meals for me. So that lasts a lot. But I, I eat just regular food. I just don't eat a lot. But I'll, I did take pictures of a week worth of food that I ate. So. Yeah. Priscilla said her husband passed from a heart attack $100,000 for one day. <gasps> so Tara's not off the charts when she says it could be up to like five, half a million dollars. Yeah. I don't know. I got to think about this. I got to really think about this. I don't have life insurance. Mike has life insurance. So it's like. You're set. So I'm set. He's not set. <laughs> Mike's uh, the one that needs to worry now. If he's Linda, how's grocery shopping in Wyoming compared to Colorado? So when we first got here, it was actually more expensive than Colorado. But now with all of the food crazy that's going on, actually the prices are lower here than when we first got here 18 months ago. Because actually there's a lot of stuff that's cheaper now than it was 18 months ago for food, even with inflation. But the big stuff like meat has actually gone down. And But it's cheaper in Colorado because I still have kids in Colorado and people I know in Colorado. It's still cheaper in Colorado than it is here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, we still adapted to it. That's that's why I keep talks saying, you know, try to put our tips into practice. Once they become habits, yeah, we, we don't notice too much because we just adapt. Ooh, Carrie is watching us from Australia. Oh. Wow. Well, hello. So well, I hope you guys are doing okay. Didn't you get a whole bunch of flooding, I think? Mm -hmm. A ton of flooding over there. I don't know. Um. All right, you're, uh, can you send me the next batch, dear? Um, all right, let's see. Just purchase volume one, a new beginning says, oops, that's, well, we have gluten-free too. 35% <laughs> off, guys, for our Valentine's sale. This is volume two. She just got volume two to add to her collection. Volume one, volume two. If you can only pick one, start with one and then go with two. I guarantee you, once you buy one, then you will buy two because... <laughs> It's just the extension. It's not repeat recipes or anything like that. So I got a uh, comment today. I forgot to tell you from a lady and she said she was so excited. She got her book and she said she couldn't believe her grocery bill went way down. Yeah. From when oh, yeah. We, we get, get person after time. person almost every day telling us that their grocery bills have gone down when they bought our cookbooks mm -hmm. and way more than paid for itself. Because so. we don't just have recipes in there. We have information. Yeah. It's chock full. Kimmy says, from She's in Her Apron, Queen, Queen Mother is perfect for me. <laughs> <coughs> Mike, so um, at my funeral, it's been decided that there, Mike and the kids are going to play... Um, God save the queen. <laughs> but as we were thinking about it, we were realizing it's also the same song as Let Freedom Ring. 
<laughs> so, freedom ring is Mike my... going to be playing at my funeral, God <coughs> Save the Queen, or Let Freedom Ring? <laughs> Might be both. <laughs> okay. Uh, Diana says, when you made your mini muffins, can I use pancake mix instead of baking mix? Yes, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I did. Uh, Kimberly Lash Nash says, coffee doesn't last that long in my house to go bad. It does have oils, so we'll go bad at some point. Yeah, it, it pretty much lasts quite a while. Queenie, huh? Susan says she has a friend who's queenie. Yeah. Um, wow. Diana says she got uh, ground beef for $1.99 a pound at Aldi. Whoa. There you go. Tomatoes for $0.99 cents That's a pound. Good. Yep. Yeah. I do miss all um, being here. I have to did say. Did you send me the next batch, Mike? Um, uh, Linda says she made our gluten-free bread. It was delicious, and it was a whole lot cheaper, let me tell you, than buying it. I can't wait to get my oven going again. But, guys, if you make my gluten-free sandwich bread in the book, follow the directions exactly. Exactly. I guarantee you, every time I get an email that says, Tara, you said this bread was good, and it did X. After I go back with six or ten <laughs> emails, we finally realize they did not follow the directions exactly. You must follow it exactly. I know I keep stressing that, but if you follow it exactly, it will work. Because I tested this recipe over 40 times. I did 40 different variations. And then last time I tested it and I had my assistant at the time test it also because she was at a different altitude and there is an altitude adjustment also on it. So it will turn out. You just have to follow it exactly. And do that with all the recipes in all of our cookbooks. At least once do it exactly like the recipe before you start substituting. Yeah. I will get recipes. Okay. Can I tell my cake joke? Uh, oh. I'll get recipes. Or I, with people come or send me questions and let's say, I, I substituted this and I substituted that and I substituted this, but I can't figure out why this didn't turn out. And so I was given a story one time about this gal. She went to visit her friend and her friend had the best tasting cake she'd ever tasted. She tasted. She said, can I have that recipe? And the gal said, oh, sure, of course. And she said, I went home and I didn't have any sugar, so I substituted this. I didn't have any flour, so I substituted this. And she went down the list of six ingredients, each one she didn't have, so she substituted. And she baked this cake and she said, I cannot figure out why this doesn't taste exactly like my friend's cake tasted. You know, and I laugh every time I get a you know a comment from somebody saying, I can't figure out why this recipe didn't turn out, and yet they'd substituted a whole bunch of things, especially in baking. People don't realize you can mix casseroles and throw stuff in casseroles and stuff like that without even having a recipe. But with baking, it's more of a scientific thing to get everything to puff up right and to do those types of things. So you have to be really careful with them. Um, okay. Trish wants to know if I watched the State of the Union address. No. Mm -mm. I don't even want to know. <laughs> All I got to do is just... Yeah, just <laughs> Yeah, I don't even want to know what happened. <laughs> Apparently, did something happen? I don't want to know. Did something happen? I guess tell me if something happened. <laughs> <sighs> do I need to do a video on it? Because I know he's de denying the whole inflation thing. My goodness. Okay, sorry. Uh, do you have cable or do you use something else? No, we do not have cable. We do have Amazon Prime. Um, so we watch things on that. Um, we also subscribe to great american family television but that's like seven dollars a month or something so we watch those for movies and that's it uh let's see uh teresa says she stops every three to four months there you go yeah mm -hmm. that, i honestly if i wasn't keeping my pantry stocked mm -hmm. i i literally i guarantee you i could not go to the grocery store for probably four, uh, probably six months. I even have enough vegetables and stuff. Oh yeah. For I, six could go, months. I could go it's at a least. Year, so, a year. I mean, I'm not, I've got a year's worth of graham crackers stockpiled. So I could just live off that. If nothing else. But I, yeah, I can go a long time without Debbie. We don't have Aldi here in Wyoming. Mm -mm. It's an Eastern thing. And that's a good thing to go further 
part, like the three to four months, because you just, every time you go, you tend to spend a little bit more than what you originally planned. So you actually save in a way. Shallon says, Tara, I know it's a soft subject, but I was binge watching your soap videos and came across the one where I made 12 pounds of hot process at once. That was something, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I impressed myself with that one. Those soap videos were so funny. Um, mm. Dee Dee, my friend's husband was a candy broker and the candy they sell in the stores on the special occasions are actually made 12 to 18 months before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Well, I took a candy class years and years ago and they said, oh, candy just hardly ever even mm -hmm. goes bad. And even like my cookies, people want to know my gingerbread men if they need to put them in the freezer because they'll get them like a couple of weeks before Christmas. What pe If you think about it, those cookies that are on the shelf, my gingerbread men are similar to that. I mean, mine are homemade, yes, but they have the same ingredients type thing. And they can stay for a year or more. And a year and a half, some of those cookies can. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, yeah. they do last. Um, if flour is stored in the freezer, how long will it last compared to stored in buckets? Well, I mean, it'll probably last two, three years in the, in the freezer. You might start getting freezer burn taste. But in a regular bucket, you can go 18 months past the date. Easy. Yeah. Um, Tina, with gas prices today, just how much are you saving if you have to drive 30 minutes to hour to get the deals? Well, do the math. Yeah. She says, is it worth it? Do the math. So if, okay, let's say it takes 100 miles for me to go get groceries. I have to drive two ways, 100 miles, okay? Well, let's just say one. Let's say... 50 miles each way. Okay. Let's say I have to go 50 miles to get groceries. <clears throat> that is a hundred miles. I get 20 miles to a gallon for my car. It's three fifty a gallon. Now we'll just say $4 a gallon. So four times five would be $20. It would cost me in gas. Okay. Let's say I go and they have chicken instead of seven dollars a pound for boneless skinless chicken breasts which is what it is well that, that's what it is at the fancy store here <clears throat> and i got it for two dollars a pound that's saving me five dollars a pound okay so all i would have to do is buy five pounds and i've paid for my gas besides all the other stuff you would get then on sale and stuff but then if I got all the other stuff on sale, I I will say that I usually did not make a trip where I didn't save at least two to three hundred dollars at least going to the grocery store. And see what happens is when you when you have to drive like that to go to the grocery store, it's not like you're t using gas to go every day. And so you once a month using the gas to go into town to get everything you need for a month, it's not, you, you're going to, it more than pays for it. And you know, let me, can I tell my guest story about my lady across the street? People worry about getting, get, they always jump on the gas thing. Well, it's going to cost me gas to go save money, but without thinking, you're probably using more gas in other areas that you don't realize. The people, my neighbors across the street, she walks her dog every day and she goes, oh, I don't know, probably at least walk one mile or more and it she's gone a whole hour and she walks and i've seen him walk really far and she walks him for the exercise every day well she takes and she works every day and she gets her car out and drives to work and she works two and a half blocks away from her house so she's getting that car out five days a week to drive two and a half blocks now if she wasn't capable of walking, I could understand that. But here she's walking for the exercise every day. Why doesn't she just save on the gas? But people don't think about saving on gas for things like that. They jump in and they immediately think about, well, am I going to be using, you know, groceries? How much gas is going to use to go get groceries? Watch other places in your life that you're wasting gas that you don't need to. Do you leave your car running when you're waiting for the kids at school? I've never left the car running. I have never seen people leave their car runnings like they do here. No, I know. And they go into the in grocery the summer store and the winter. for 45 minutes and the car, and the is car running. is still running when I come back Every out. Every time I go to the store, there's at least one or two cars <laughs> running. Crazy. Or people, when I go pick the grandkids up at school, 
all these moms are sitting with the air conditioner going and the car running and all the time. Nobody thinks about that because they want to be comfortable in the air conditioner. But the thing is, when it comes to groceries, because once again, it's like it's kind of like an excuse to be able to buy the expensive groceries. People kind of and I'm not saying you are necessarily, but different people kind of uh, come up with, well, can't yeah but doesn't it do this or doesn't it do whenever they say doesn't it do this usually that's a way of coming up with an excuse for not you know trying to save or go to someplace different is what yeah. i mean so and i like i said i don't know that that's you necessarily but sometimes people do use that yeah did that make sense what i just said i didn't hear what you said oh, so great <laughs> I oh, had other things I was having to deal with. I heard, saw you snapping at Michael there. I think, boy, he better get right over here. Well, I was trying to get his attention, his attention. with sound. <laughs> Michael! <laughs> He's sitting there ignoring her again. And Gina says, we have no choice but to drive an hour to grocery store here in North Dakota. Yes, I lived in Idaho. It was 70 miles to the nearest town. Mm -hmm. You just, and when you went into town, you didn't just go for groceries. You went to the doctor on that mm -hmm. day. You went and got your prescriptions that yeah. day. You went and got your clothes shopping or whatever done. Mm -hmm. You you don't just go into town. As a matter of fact, it's just a part of life. And you know that when you live in the country, everybody has this glorified thing of I'm going to go live in the country off the land and it's going to save me so much money. I actually think say, I think it's I save more, more money living in the city mm -hmm. than I ever did yeah. living in rural areas. Yeah. We spend way more here in Wyoming than we ever did in Colorado. And it was a higher cost of living in Colorado. So, but yeah, um, yeah, and D. Lee says, I have a price in my head that I will pay for meat if it doesn't go above it, that. Exactly. I don't buy it. I do that all the time. I was, yeah. I forget what it was now. I went to the grocery store when I went to get those two things yesterday, and I thought, this may be the last time I get this. And I do that with a lot of stuff. I think, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to get it because if the price goes up, I just don't buy it anymore. Will butter or oil work instead of shortening for your pie crust in Dining on a Dime Volume 1 on sale? 35% no. off right now for Valentine's Day. No. Now, you, you can must use, use shortening. You can use, you can use the butter or the oil, but it will not be the, same, be the same pie crust. It won't be near as like, um, yeah. it'll just be different. And the when flavor. people don't like it, don't email us. If you follow our recipe exactly. Yeah, that's one of those things. Good. It won't, because a lot of people want to use substitute the butter for the shortening and you just can't. People don't realize they're, they're thinking, I know a lot of people, I don't know if you are or not, but a lot of people are thinking healthy and so they want to use, they don't want to use shortening. They're scared of it. I'm not sure why, you know, because it's not, but it will not, it will not lard and sh you, you could maybe use lard. You could maybe use lard, but that's shortening, still, I don't, I would, same. I prefer yeah. the Crisco. The Crisco makes it flaky mm -hmm. and light. You're going to have a hard lump if you use butter. Yeah. Or the oil. Or the, the oil, oil be yeah. even worse. Yeah. Uh, Lynn says, I know people who will drive 50 miles one way to eat a special meal at a really nice special restaurant, <laughs> but won't drive that same distance to save a hundred dollars on groceries. Good I point. Know, don't get Good me started. Point. Don't yeah. get me started. See, that's it. You'll, you'll, like I said, you'll waste the gas for different things and not realize it. Yeah. Uh, Robin says she wear, wear clothes before you wash them. If my husband puts something in the laundry before it needs to be washed, I pseudo wash, which means she only puts them in the dryer to fluff them for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, my husband makes sure they're really stinky before they're gone into the wash. He does not. Have a hook. Well, yes, he has a, my Mike has a hook that he just puts his clothes to rewear, and he's got like two or three things, so he doesn't have to wear the same thing every day. Because if he goes a lot, heaven forbid. <laughs> You're getting it tonight, aren't you? No, Michael? this isn't him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> heaven for oh man, sorry. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Did you get oh, sick? No, my accident. I oh, you hit it right on my. Oh no, that hurts. <laughs> When she like fell on the floor. Accident. Oh, on the car accident in uh, her glass. Mm. She's got glass in her head from an accident we had how many, 40 years ago? Holy cow. Sorry. I was almost going to throw up. <laughs> that hurt. Um, the whole windshield flew into her face and yeah. her face was embedded with glass. Have, I still have glass and if I hit it just right, it really 
is unpleasant. <laughs> um, what was Mike and the Mike hooks. and the hooks. He would go to the library to work at the library, not for the library. And there was a woman that was hollering at him because he was wearing the same shirt two days in a row. <laughs> it was the grocery store or something. Well, KPTS, oh, it was, no, it was his work. It was his work. Sorry. I was just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Are you so petty that you watch what people wear and if they wear something the second or third time that week? It's crazy. So well, he has a hooks where he puts his different shirts on. So like his church shirt versus his flannel shirt versus his t-shirt. <laughs> Which is good because, I mean, because I do one load of laundry for me every two weeks and one load of laundry for him every two weeks. But we don't stink. We're not dirty. Mm -mm. Our clothes are clean. Mm -hmm. But, and even actually in garden seasoning, seasoning, in garden season, I have even less laundry because then I let my clothes do get stinky and all of that. But I only wear them around the house while I'm working in the yeah. garden. But I'll wear the same pants and shirt for an entire week. Oh, I can just see all the gossip sites now talking about me <laughs> smelling. smelling. <laughs> see, what's happened is years ago, people never changed their clothes. Men would actually put long johns yeah. on for the winter, and they wouldn't take them off all winter long till spring. Can you imagine to how ripe that one was? <laughs> I mean, for a guy that works outside and stuff, can you imagine? But doing laundry without a wash machine is so hard. So very hard. And so you just didn't, we just have gotten kind of, I don't know if you call it lazy or what, but so spoiled in a way because we've got the washers and the dryers and it's so easy just to throw them in and you don't have to do it. We just do it because it's easy to do. Yeah. Okay. So let me just explain real quick. I know there's some comments. <laughs> 1986, we were in a really bad car accident. The glass... The, wind, the glass from the windshield hit my head. Totally, what? Sliced my forehead. I don't know how you want to say that. The bits. Had to have plastic surgery, all this stuff. But I still have glass in there. And I still get glass out of my forehead. And every now and then, if I hit that scar just right... There's a piece of glass in there, or maybe it's just the scar tissue. I don't know. It might just be the scar tissue. But if I hit it just right, it hits on a nerve, and it makes me want to throw up. So that's that story. If it's you've ever got there. a piece of glass in your yeah. splinter, a splinter glass in your foot, and you know what it yeah. feels like when you step on it. Glass is different anyway. from other splinters. It's kind yeah. of, I'm getting chills just thinking well, about it. My gr I don't know if I should tell this or not. What? Send me the next questions, Mike. But Grandma had a friend one time that broke an uh, the end of a needle off of her finger in her finger one time and like 50 years later like a really really long time later she was picking out a scab on her nose and it came out on a scab on her it had been in her system going through oh my goodness yeah. the needle had been going through her system yeah ladies I sew a lot and I used to put pins in my mouth all the time. Do not put the pins <sighs> in your mouth. You think you can hold them real careful. Do not do it. Everybody that I, I know so many people that, yeah. you know, accidentally cough or something without realizing and they suck it in. Uh -huh. And that's one of the worst things. So don't do that. Yeah. Uh, Johnny says, do you have, Okay, she must have been talking into her phone or, or auto check or something. It, it says, do you have the I finance taco recipe in the cookbook? I have volume one, but couldn't find it. So I have no idea what that means. But <laughs> we have taco seasoning in here. And then in volume two, we have one meat, one taco meat that can be used. I think it was seven or eight different ways. So you make one base meat for your tacos and then you can make your burritos and your quesadillas and your what tostadas tacos all of those things with the one taco meat in here but if you want the taco seasoning it's in dining on a dime volume one 25 off right now 
35% off right now <laughs> for our Valentine's sale. And for those of you wondering, yes, we still have a few of our undated planners, although I'm going down to Colorado to get them in the next few days, but we should have enough in stock. These aren't on sale, but you can start using them right now. They're printed in the USA. That's why we don't ever put them on sale. So because we just can't get them for cheaper because they're printed here. Um, Sarah, I saw a video somewhere where they're using a box cakes, cake mix and one can of soda instead of egg and oil. I don't know. I didn't know. I don't make cakes. Would that really work? Yes, it actually yes, really it works. Does. Because the carbonation, so think about it. The carbonation in soda is basically the same as sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. And that's what you put in cakes. And do we have that on the website? Yeah. We've got that same mm -hmm. recipe on the website. Yeah. So it does it's work. It's two-ingredient yeah. cake mix, I think, livingonadime.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Lori says, my grandma's barbecue sauce recipe is the best. Isn't that good? I just. It's the best. It really is. I can't. I know a lot of people want to use other yeah. barbecue. They make up the hamburger part of that and then they use <coughs> other um, barbecue sauce. But the barbecue sauce is what makes that recipe. It's, oh, it's yeah. to die for. Yeah. Uh, Dorothy says, you stop sugar. Does honey have the same effect? Unfortunately, it does. I'm not on any kind of artificial sweeteners. Or, well, monk fruit a little bit, but even that I don't really do. So I'm just off of everything at the moment. Um, Cheryl, how do you convince the 31 and 35-year-old children to go to work? Uh, you put all their stuff on the doorstep. <laughs> uh, seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got, you got seven days, 14 days to find a job or your stuff is on straight it they're gonna That's stay okay. they're gonna yeah. stay with you as long as you're supporting them why there's no what, convincing what, mo there's what motive is there for them to try to get a job you're taking care of them you know so yeah until until they have to have the consequences of their actions they're not going to do anything so there's no consequences they have a place to probably stay and food to eat and so why should they yeah, you know, why should they if you're taking care yeah. of them and i and a lot of times parents think it's the, all the kids' fault. And I, I don't, I need to be, I like trying to be kind about this, but you've got to really real, rethink things and think, am I part of the problem because I'm allowing them to do this? Uh, I know it's hard. I'm a mom. I know I'm a grandma. It would be, it's terribly hard. But a lot of times it's the parents. It's not all, they always want us to tell how to change the kids or fix the kids or get, get the kids to do something. But the parents are the ones that really are the adult adults here that have to take the action. They have to be the strong one. They have to be the one with the common sense and say, okay, you've got to leave. Give them a time limit. And once that time limit is there, don't go beyond. Because what will happen is they'll come home with an excuse. I know exactly what will happen. They'll come home with excuse. Well, I couldn't do this or couldn't do that. You've got to stick your guns. It'll be hard. You just got to plan on it being hard. But it, that's you're helping your kids when you're you do this. You're just enabling them. Now you're enabling them. It's like them doing drugs or alcohol or something like that and being irresponsible in that area. You're doing the same thing with them not working. And Aloha Ha said, change the locks. She's if you have serious. to, yeah, I'm serious. I, mean, I yeah. would serve them a 30 day eviction notice with your notification that they must find a job in 30 days. Or I mean, in, I would give them a 30 day eviction notice, tell them they have seven or 14 days, probably seven days. Jobs are plentiful right now. So mm. I would give them seven days to find a job with a 30 day eviction notice and tell them, if they get the job in seven days, you will let them stay another 30 days to find an apartment and get their down payment and everything. And they're out of there. And seriously, all of their stuff out on the street and change the locks. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would, you are not helping your kids. You're enabling them to be bums. Mm -hmm. And sorry, mom's being nice about it. I'm not going to be nice about it. That's your fault. Mm -hmm. It's usually the parents because they're just not, and I know it's hard, but you have to do it. You really do. You have to, you have to love those kids more than yourself because you're afraid you're going to be uncomfortable and it's going to hurt you. 
And so you're kind of, it's, it's more important to you to not feel uncomfortable or to be hurt by telling them they've got to leave, or you're afraid they're not going to love you anymore. You've oh. got to get all, get rid of those emotions. And you being a parent is tough. Sometimes it really is hard, but you've got to think about, you've got to love those kids more and do it to help them and do it that way more. T Cosby said, listen to Tara on her bread. <laughs> she is. <laughs> <laughs> He said, I'm one of the people who didn't make good bread, but it was my fault. The recipe is perfect. If you follow it, we, I think she's the one. Oh. <laughs> you turn the book right side up. 35% off right now for a Valentine's sale. I think she was one of the ones. I'm not kidding. We had like 10 emails. <laughs> and I'm like, I know this works. You are doing something wrong. No, I followed the rest. Okay, was your yeast fresh? Yes, my yeast. Okay, was your water exactly the right temperature? Oh, I don't think so. And I can't remember for her what it was. Well, I don't remember exactly what her thing was. But when we got it down to the end, she had changed something in the recipe. I can't remember what it was, but she had changed something in the recipe. We, we <laughs> try, we so try perfect, as best so. as we can, guys. But you've got yeah. to realize we'll have people come and say, I just made... The biscuit recipe and it didn't work. What did I do wrong? <laughs> oh, yeah, no idea. You know, it's like we can't even see it. We can't, we don't know what ingredients you use. We but don't know if you're in high altitude. I guarantee you, every one of these recipes has been tested. Well, that's and tested by our viewers, and they work and they and turn out delicious. It's not like we're being super dogmatic in one mm. sense. We know they have been used millions of times at this point mm -hmm. over and over and people have had lots of success so if you call and say well this res you got to fix this recipe because something's mm -hmm. wrong it didn't work for me usually it's the person you know that's having the trouble yeah but I we do try because <laughs> i was just sitting there thinking i know this works i know that she's doing something wrong but i couldn't figure out what Kay <laughs> says i know older washers seem to last a long time what is recommended for new washers actually that video is coming out in a couple of weeks yeah she's gonna so he did say don't get a top loading new top loading now just get i would HE recommend one. front loading washer only um but man guys i think it's amanda amanda is that it amanda amanda i think that was the last one i when i moved that was the one i had and i did a front loading amanda and i did have more success with that than i have other ones so but there are things <coughs> you guys are going to watch you guys are going to really really watch my appliance videos i mean one it, of them is an hour long and we're gonna i'm gonna have my editor break it up into the individual appliances because he was going so long and the information was so informative. I'm like, dude, you need to have your own YouTube channel because it was stuff that people don't know. Like one thing that people are doing that, and it's not the laundry detergent that they should not be doing to their washers and they're breaking their washers doing this. And I, every single person I know does this. I was doing it. I'm not going to be doing it anymore. So, but you guys need to watch and see. It's it's, it's, pro, it's one of those that will really save you money. If you just had watched it for the laundry detergents tip, that would have saved you money. So it really is worth work, working. Oh, Johnny said it was Navajo <laughs> tacos. Oh yeah. The Navajo tacos are in dining one. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what is that? Navajo tacos, page 263. In volume one. Yeah. <laughs> Those are good too. Those are really uh, good. All right. Uh, let's see. Amy, I, almost everything I eat has cheese in it. How do you stockpile? Just freeze it. You but can you, freeze cheese. You'd be surprised now. Look at the expiration. I just got some cheese mm -hmm. yesterday, and it's good until I think like June or July. So check the expiration. You can freeze it, but check the expiration date because a cheese goes for really, it's aged. Cheese is aged. So naturally it's good if you keep it in the refrigerator. It's and good. if it molds in your refrigerator, if it's block cheese, just, just cut, cut off it the off the mold and, mold and, eat, and it. eat it anyway. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's not going to hurt you mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. I mean, that's what cheese is. It's yeah. Good. They so. have mold on it, you know, so it's when they make yeah. it. Um, okay, send me the next batch, Mike. Jacqueline says, 12,000 killed in Turkey, Syria, earthquake. Very sad. Yeah. Yeah. So, but let's talk about that for a minute. I have issues with the Christian radio station. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do. 
but. <laughs> okay, this, the earthquake that happened over there is really, really bad. And I am not downplaying it at all. As a matter of fact, I just told Mike last night, I said, I cannot imagine what it would be like to have your entire town, city, area decimated to the point you live where are they supposed to get food yeah, water who's, to have food. to stay yeah what what do you do in that situation i mean that's like the ultimate of the worst prepping scenarios that could happen and you cannot prep for that mm -mm. there are some things like that you just cannot prep for it but so i'm not downplaying that at all but you have to be careful when you see these things that it doesn't consume your life. Yes, we're compassionate for these people. Yes, we help out with organizations that are legitimate organizations that are sure. going in to help. Yeah. Make, sure Make sure you're donating only to some place that is legitimate. But you can't let your life be upset by it. And I know that sounds harsh. And I know that sounds cruel because we, we are compassionate for these people and you do what you can, but there's really nothing you can do. You can help donate to legitimate organizations and you can pray for these people, but you can't make yourself sick worrying over it yeah. or being upset about it because of the news we can get so much stuff on the internet and every place and so much is happening now all of a sudden you have to kind of protect uh your emotions yes. and your mind a little bit you have to protect the same way you wouldn't physically beat on your body over and over again and exercise it till the point it collapses because your body can only take so much physical abuse and you wouldn't do that your emotions and your mind can only take in so much. So you have to be very, very careful that you can't dwell on this stuff and think about it all the time. And you're maybe not doing that, but we're trying to give a warning to us. No, to but people. this Christian talk show late or Christian radio lady today, she was just going on yeah. and on. And I'm like, lady, first of all, where is your faith? Oh, <laughs> you're supposed to be a Christian and this is the way you're acting. Yes, we have compassion for these people, but she was literally saying how it was keeping her up at night. Oh yeah. With See worry. now you can't, you can't do that. Jesus said, I came to give you peace. And if you don't have some peace, that doesn't mean you don't acknowledge and you don't see what's going on and you do what you can to help. Like Tara said, but you have got to be careful because you will be of no use to anybody. No one. If you don't take care of yourself, you you won't be able to take care of yourself or anybody else. And so, like I say, you have to pace yourself on. I heard a guy uh, just this week and he he does a, a thing about the rapture and different stuff. And he was he said, I just didn't realize he tries to keep up on all this information that's happening in the world and on and on. And him and his wife got away for a whole week with no Internet, nothing, you know, nothing. And he said, I didn't realize how much that was affecting me and how refreshed I feel going just one week without checking everything on the Internet. So you've got to be careful. You burnout is a horrible thing and people are getting it really bad in different ways. So you've got to be careful. Yep. Oh, happy birthday, Johnny. I didn't see oh, that happy part birthday. on your comment. <laughs> Do I get an extra discount? <laughs> Do you, yeah, that's good. Good try. Now, that's a frugal person Lisa talking asking, there. That's yeah, good. that's a frugal person. Oh, Mom, you're matching my towels. I, oh, I sure am. <laughs> Mary noticed that. Oh, um, I do that too, Mary. I notice things like that all the time. That's funny. Den Denise, Tara, did your doctor tell you that was probably the reason for your fibromyalgia was the wreck? So, no, that's just, so we got a virus in 1987. We got a virus that just caused our immune system to go wacko. So for us, and probably just the stress of the way, because we, we were in just such deep poverty, our systems were probably, our immune systems were probably lowered. So we couldn't fight off 
the virus like normal people would. So bandana grandma, I had a daughter who didn't want to go to college or get a job. I told her we were going to drive her to the homeless shelter and we were serious. Yeah. That's a good one. I, yeah. I yeah. mean, I would. My mm -hmm. kids know full good and well. Oh, yeah. You ain't going to be mooching off of mom and dad. Now, it's totally fine if they have some illness or divorce or something where they need to come home for a short while. And while they are home, they, they should be, be helping. helping. And if they don't have a job, they will be physically helping. They They're not just going to be sitting there chores playing and, video games. Yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah. So um, Dana, will dehydrating and powdering cooked eggs be the same as raw when baking bread? I don't know. I use for dehydrated. Bread, sure. I use dehydrated eggs in bread just fine. Yeah, I think. But I have never done it myself, so I don't know if there's a special process they use for dehydrating canned eggs. I have used canned eggs in bread. Yeah. It works just fine. You know, but when you I have when you have something like this, what I would do is make like a half a recipe, or you know something like that, and just try it and see what happens. Because if it works, then you could be saving a lot of money, yeah. you know, in the long run. So experiment a little bit and say if you're not sure on this and we don't and if we haven't or you don't know if somebody else who's tried it just experiment like that but don't use the whole recipe uh to you know because then you wouldn't waste as many ingredients mm -hmm. uh okay send me the next batch mike if there's any more um yeah i mean so bandana grim <laughs> <laughs> oh Susie. <laughs> so bandana girl says send me the next one she said <laughs> I bought pink Himalayan salt. The package said it was from a 2,500-year-old <coughs> mind. Then it is best by best used by date, 724. I guess they dug it up just in time. <laughs> the stupidity! The stupidity of it all! That's so good, Susie. Oh, my God. Goodness, 25 year old. My heart is going to fail. Oh, heck, that is a for good, the stupidity. Word. You're so right. Oh, that's so funny, Susie. How true is that? And yet, people, how many times people fall for it? All I know. Time? See, Susie, so we, I know Susie. We know Susie. And so she has enough common sense to figure this out. But you know, a lot of people don't. You don't think about this. Not you guys, but you know, yeah. a lot of people don't think about this. Yeah. You got to wake up your common sense. And you know what? Once you start using it a little bit, it gets better and better and better. It really does. It's like anything else. If you start using it, that's why we keep trying to get you guys to figure things out yourself a little bit because it's like, you know, teaching you what is it? You give a kid person a fish and they feed him for one day and you teach them how to fish and feeds them for life. That's what we try to do here is give you the tips how to do it, not the prices so you can feed yourself for the rest of your life. <laughs> she says she thinks it'll make a video on it. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you the, should. The steer, I mean, I just... <laughs> I'm sorry. That's good. That's been I my know. month, my year. That's a good one. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. I know. Oh, Jeannie says the Navajo tacos are good, but the green chili is fabulous. So, you know what would be even better is the green chili on the Navajo, on the Navajo tacos. tacos. I never did that. Oh, my goodness. That would be so delicious. Or to dip the Navajo tacos in the green in chili. In the green chili. 35% off for our Valentine's Day sale, guys. Living on a dime .com. Dining on a dime volume two also. <coughs> and our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook, guys. We're having a Valentine's Day sale because I know prices are going up, but they don't have to be. Really, they don't have to be. So um, grab our cookbooks. They will they will help you save money. Uh, Marilyn, when you do you use laundry detergent, when you're using, do you use liquid? Do you use the teaspoon for, for both powdered and liquid? And he told me powdered detergent cleans different stains than liquid you guys be watching for those videos i'm telling you i learned mm -hmm. a lot i didn't know and mom and i have done a lot with laundry over the years and there was several things that i did not know on there he, he's good he he's was really good, good. i'm like Dude. he's like a rocket science person for, for laundry for laundry for appliances. And appliances and i'm telling you the cleaning <laughs> thing i know i probably 90% of the people I know clean their appliances with this cleaner 
And he said, that's the number one thing that is ruining people's appliances. It's the number one appliance call he gets is people using this clean. I'm not going to tell what it is. They're going to have to leave. No, watch well, the video. I was going to say, I don't know that I've ever cleaned my appliance. Oh, for pity's sake. Oh my goodness. You guys are going to die. You know, that's why I didn't. Yeah. 90 I've to never, 95% of the people that. I know yeah. that clean appliances but you're with a right. special they cleaner. They usually do use that. But oh, you're going to have to watch the video. <laughs> it's good. It's yeah. really good, guys. Yeah. Uh, but I'm telling you. So, um, and I think he has like nine kids, so they know a little bit about laundry. <laughs> yeah, he does. Anna, did I miss Mike's brilliant idea? No, I haven't nope. announced it yet. But we were Wait. working. Oh. We were working on it today, and there was a major problem I was having with it. It there was this one thing that just was not computing, <laughs> and we've been racking our brains since we started it, and I could not come up with anything. And today. I asked the contractor, I said, I just don't think this is going to work. I said, I'm so sorry. I know you've been working and working on this, but it's just this portion of it is not going to work. And he said, oh, well, what if you tried this? And I was like, I was at Restore yesterday and they had one. He's like, oh, really? I said, yes. It's I am not exaggerating. An hour later, Mike and the boys come home because Jax got sick. And so he had to come home from school. So him and the boys came home. They walked in the door. I said, give me the keys. I'm going to the restore. <laughs> I went to the restore. They had it. And I think it's going to work really good. It's cute. It's cute. I mm -hmm. was like, oh, that's an even better brilliant idea. That's a brilliant idea for I'm the brilliant this. idea. <laughs> so, yes. And we're getting close. We have about, well, depending on what I do for the countertops, I might do an epoxy countertop. If. I do an epoxy countertop. We have about three weeks left. If I don't do an epoxy countertop, then we'll have about nine weeks left. So if I have to order countertops. So anyway, yeah. Uh, Jacqueline, where do bad thoughts come from? I get some in the morning just from Satan. So just, mm -hmm. just get it in your mind. Just memorize one Bible verse um, or not even one Bible verse. Just start quoting just say jesus out loud yeah, just, just say, say jesus, jesus help me overcome a, this start singing a praise song start singing you know worthy is the lamb is a good song to sing that's straight out of revelation i think and um so just just quote it straight it's the not so much you're a bad person <laughs> when you wake up in the morning we all do that with these thoughts it's like yeah. he's just satan is right there waiting ready to give you all these thoughts first thing and what happens is it's a matter of learning to can say you know i'm not going to listen to it i've just gotten i'm so tired of dealing with you i'm not going to listen to you anymore yeah. and then i jump up and get busy and go on my way you know you're not you're not even going to be part of my life and it's interesting uh, pastor jack hibbs was saying the other day and i found this to be true you would think the longer you're a christian and and uh the older you get that the temptations and stuff would get less and those thoughts like that would get less. But see, if you're an older Christian, you're a little bit stronger and you've been in the battle longer and, and Satan knows that and he's going to be all over you because you're fighting him. You know, somebody's younger doesn't, God takes, protects them, gives them extra. But when you've been there longer, Satan's, you've been fighting him. He's going to fight you like crazy because you're not giving up. 71 years i haven't given up you know he doesn't like that and so he gets brings out the big guns the longer you've been a christian and you know yeah. so don't it's not you it's just that's what you have to fight yeah. um and so pistol is my appliance repair man who's also my neighbor <laughs> <laughs> and yeah so um that video is probably going to come out in about two two or three weeks. I know I'm sorry. You're going to have to wait, but about two or three weeks that, um, appliance videos, videos, it's going to be a series because the, the one video was an hour long on how to keep your appliances from breaking down. And guys, I'm telling you, like, all the things he told me in these, like the washer and the stovetop and everything, I'm telling you, like 90 to 95% of the people do these things 
And this is what's breaking their appliances down mm -hmm. quicker. And, and so, and I can attest to this small amount of laundry detergent because my mom, she has the brightest and she had the cleanest laundry I've ever seen. I mean, it, it was, her whites would be whiter than that stove. They just stove. It was just, it was bright. And I kept saying, what do you do? What do you do? And she didn't do really anything different, but she'd never use the whole thing of laundry detergent. She always used just a little tiny amount to save money. And I think that's part of getting a good, clean laundry. So they're guessing Clorox. They're guessing vinegar. They're guessing a fresh. They're guessing Comet vinegar. You're all wrong. <laughs> yeah. You'll be surprised when you hear it. You'll be yeah. really surprised. Sue says, but I need to know what not to clean my washer with now. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, okay. worse, nothing worse will happen to it. Here's the thing. I had planned to, it. no, well... Yeah, probably it won't happen in two to three weeks. No. But, I, well, one of them could, actually. One of them's pretty bad. Uh, Tammy, we don't use daily devotionals, really. I mean, I just read the Bible. I do. Streams in the Desert is one that I like. Uh, Upmost for Highest is a good one. I use Upmost for His Highest sometimes but over the years. I, I don't it. really... I don't, I just sit there's, down and There's the nothing Bible. wrong with yeah. using them. We're not saying. It's just, I, I've used utmost for his highest for years. But if you're a new Christian, he would be a little bit harder because uh, I've got the original to understand because yeah. it's older. You know, it's an older thing. But uh, if you need to, you can just find, uh, a lot of people use daily bread. Um, they do have some good, just to get you started as a new Christian. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Livingonadime.com, 35% off, guys. Our Valentine sale, gluten-free, dairy-free is the green one. And then our volume one, volume two. Guys, every single day I get testimonies from people saying how they have cut their grocery bills. 35% um, off right now. Mike's going to send me the last of the questions real quick here. And while he's sending that, um, we... Uh, We've, we've already tested all the recipes, so I know that they work, and we know that you will save money for on them. It's just learning how to cook differently and easier. Guys, you don't know how much time you're going to save using our recipes because it just will save you so much time. There is a show that was like 30 minute dinner oh, in 30 minutes. 30 minute recipes. Yeah, yeah. And everybody was so excited. I thought. I wouldn't make it if I spent 30 minutes every day cooking a meal. It, that was I don't spend that long. No, I don't spend that long at all either. So I was, but people were excited just to have a thing that, and even I see now on the boxes of, you know, the food you buy, they send you all the food you need for that one meal. What are those things called? Like Hello Fresh or something yeah. like that. Even those, they'll say, oh, these only take like 30 minutes or something to get this meal. That's way longer. And on those types of foods, I, a gal, I've never used them myself, but she, was, she tested a bunch. And she said, you know what I found out? Every box they send has a different brand new recipe. And she said, I have to, it's hard using a new recipe for the first time, getting used to it and figuring out how to do it. And she said, I had to do that every single time instead of just using my good old mm -hmm. Family recipes. I have 10 recipes for spring and fall, 10 recipes for summer, and, or I mean for 10, 10 recipes for fall and winter and 10 recipes for spring and summer. I make the same 10 recipes over pretty much all the time. I have them memorized. I don't even have to look at the recipes mm -hmm. anymore. Then every week or so I'll add something different just for a change. But when you make the same recipes that your family likes eating anyway. Yeah, your family doesn't it's care. Fast, it's usually easy. you. And you have it almost memorized and you can do it without thinking. But these ones that you buy have shipped to you and everything. She said she had to, it took her longer because she had to think and figure out the recipe. Yeah. So uh, Karen says you have parents have to make living at their house uncomfortable. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the parents. Mm -hmm. And we have a very set schedule for our children they know that at this age if they're not in college they're going to be they know as soon as they get out of high school they're going to be working and then at this age they start paying rent to us and no i don't save it for a down payment or anything i use it to pay the bills <laughs> <laughs> i 
they're just a mean they're, mom. They're I taking showers. Them. They're eating your food. So that's what that money's going <laughs> and for. And they pay for all their extra stuff. And then by a certain age, they are going to be looking for an apartment, getting out on their own. So we already, we have a, a system that we use. And, and for you new, newer moms and dads or young, with younger kids, it's better if you can start this early. My like kids, they didn't get everything every time I went to the grocery store. Yeah. But you know, my kids knew by the time you're 18, you, well, by the time they were 16, they had to have job. a job yeah. and they knew this from the time they were 10 years old or younger, you know, as soon as you mm -hmm. turn 16, you're going to have a job. And they just, that was just part of their life. They just accepted that. So they were, Tark was like 15 and a half or something. And like David and, was 16 when COVID hit. Well, he couldn't go out and get a regular job because he has asthma and couldn't wear a mask. So he was working for us. Yeah. So you, you figure something out, but you, yeah. you play the ground rules when they're younger. And so when that time comes, they they don't even think about it. They just automatic transition out. And, and that's why I say a lot of times it's a parent, you know, they, you have to start early to do teach mm -hmm. them this stuff and things. I, Oh, yeah. And their rent increases every year from that certain time that they start paying rent. Then it increases every year. We make it harder. It's on more them. motivation yeah. to, yeah. To and let on. me tell you, I'm not giving them a discount for living with me over getting an apartment because that gives them motivation <laughs> to get their buns out. Once, I mean, we, we do it in increments getting higher. But if they were 25 living at home, they would be paying me seven hundred and fifty to nine hundred and fifty dollars. Oh yeah, at least and have to be working and be working. That would be my requirements. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah. So, livingonadime.com, guys. Our Valentine's Day sale is going on right now. Thirty five percent off all of our print books, Volume One, Volume Two, and our gluten free, dairy free cookbook. Thank you for watching. We're going to be going live several more times this week during our sale, talking about more grocery savings. So watch for that. Livingonadime.com. Bye-bye, guys. guys.